Hello, everyone. I'm Dom Renna, and the NYR Zone podcast starts right now. Welcome inside this week's edition of the NYR Zone Podcast. Another great week uh, behind us. I'm looking forward to another great week coming up this week in the NHL and for the New York Rangers. Yesterday was a big night in the NHL. Sidney Crosby recording his 1,000th career point. Congratulations to Sid the Kid, one of the greatest players to play the game today and in history. Uh, looking at it for the Rangers, they went 2-1-0 this week. Uh, their six-game winning streak was snapped last night uh, for a um, a t- win total on the season of 37, uh, 19 losses, and one overtime loss. Rangers uh, had a good chance to get to 20 games over 500 last night, but were unable to do that. And a lot of things to get to this week, but first let's start with looking at our week in review. Starting from last Saturday, uh, the Rangers were in at the Garden finishing their long homestand against the Colorado Avalanche. Rangers were looking to sweep them for the second time in the last two years. And Henrik Lundqvist was looking for career win number 400. So a lot on the line at the Garden that night. Rangers looking to win a season, to tie a season-high five-game winning streak. And it all started with Kevin Klein putting the Rangers on the board after an Oscar Lindbergh face-off victory. Uh, there was an icing from Colorado leading to the Lundberg win. On the play, Brady Shea picked up his 23rd assist of the season. Shea, and added, he also had some assists the other uh, last night. Shea, at the, t- at the time, now ranked 16th amongst all NHL defensemen with, with those 23 assists. He's continuing to put up a great season, and I want to, which is why I will talk about um, Shea later on and what happens if they do acquire a defenseman at the deadline because. There's stuff to talk about there because we know how AV thinks sometimes. But that will be something for uh, a little bit later to talk about. Uh, 16, Rangers had the lead for about the entire first period until 16 seconds to go when Gabriel Landeskog took advantage of a great opportunity tying the game at one on the rush. Nick Holden was unable to keep the puck in, which led to the quality scoring chance for Colorado. And late goals are killers. And you saw that right in the second period as Colorado came out aggressive. Former Ranger John Mitchell shot from the boards, got by Lundqvist to give Colorado the 2-1 lead. Uh, Lundqvist thought he was interfered with, but the fact of the matter was he was late getting his stick down five hole. Colorado held the lead 2-1 going into the third. And then we saw what we saw from this team all season long. This team just does not quit. They don't give up. When they're even when they're down big in games, remember remember the Dallas game when they almost came back and won that one. They were down seven three going into the third. They scored three, seven six loss. They just don't give up. They did the same thing against Columbus. This team does not give up, and you saw it that against Colorado, uh, the Rangers came out buzzing. Kevin Klein again giving the Rangers a two uh, tie in the game at two. Excuse me there. And then Rick Nash converted off of a beautiful pass from Derek Stepan, putting the Rangers ahead 3-2. Um, very easy play for Nash. Beautiful deflection. Um, Rick Nash still having trouble scoring. So nothing really to um, digest after that. Then the, the rest of the night just was, let's get Henrik Lundqvist this win. Let's get him win number 400 and 100 at home. And they did. Kevin Hayes secured the win with an empty net with the empty net goal, and Henrik Lundqvist became the 12th player to reach 400 career wins. He is the fastest to do so in 727 games. Uh, the crowd was chanting Henrik, Henrik, and it was great. Uh, he's he after that game he won eight out of his last 10 starts, season high five game winning streak, home record improved to 18, 11, and one. So good stuff there for the Rangers. Then they went to Columbus Monday the 13th. Doesn't really have a nice vibe as Friday the 13th has. But nonetheless, Antti Ranta got his first start since returning from injury. Um, the Rangers won that game 3-2 in Columbus. Brandon Dubinsky got Columbus on the board. 
beat Ranta towards the end of the period, giving uh, Columbus the one nothing lead. Then Dan Girardi decided uh, he was making his return to the lineup after missing a few games from uh, blocking a shot. If you saw the picture on uh, Instagram, his ankle was not looking too well. Uh, so Girardi tied the game shorthanded 1-1. Kevin Hayes and JT McMillan once again on a penalty kill did some great work. Uh, then Kevin Hayes would give the Rangers the lead on a breakaway. Beautiful shot from Kevin Hayes. Kevin Hayes is filthy. His hands are amazing. And it's fun to watch. It really, really is. Uh, but then Felina would tie for Columbus. 2-2 uh, there. But then Jimmy VZ woke up. And uh, ever since VZ was reunited with Rick Nash and Derek Stepan, his game has been playing so well. His game has really evolved. And you could, I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that he's not playing on the fourth line and he's playing with skilled players, but his game has really changed since he's been put on that line with Nash and Stepan. And it was like that earlier in the season, too. Don't forget that. That was a line before Rick Nash got hurt. So uh, VZ gave the Rangers a lead. Beautiful shot, 3-2. On Tiranta, 30 saves. Season high, six-game winning streak for the Rangers. And they take that into the game against the New York Islanders with a small little lineup change that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, Matt Pumple was reinserted into the lineup over Pavel Buchnevich against the Islanders. So that was something to look, to look at as to how it was going to change. <clears throat> So now we, look, now we look at the Islander game last night. Rangers lost that one 4-2. to two. Islanders snapped the Rangers' six-game winning streak. And right out of the gate, the Rangers were in trouble. Mark Stahl took a trip, uh, tripping penalty 45 seconds in. They did kill the penalty. Lundqvist had to make some saves. But then Nick Holden took a penalty, giving the Islanders their second power play in the first five minutes of the game. Got, uh, the Rangers' top two lines could not get on the ice because they were killing penalties. Obviously, it's going to be a problem. But as the power play expired, Brady Shea found Matt Zuccarello, who had, had Nick Holden on his right. Uh, Zuccarello passed to Holden on the two-on-one. Holden put it in the back of the net. Ninth goal of the season, one nothing Rangers. That would be the score after 20 minutes. And a period which I thought had a lot more shots than what it looked like. Um, only combined uh, sh- 10 saves for at least no, uh, for no goalie. There, no goalie made 10 saves in that period. Uh, both teams were held to under 10 shots. Excuse me for the mess up there. I misread what I was, uh, what I was reading. Um, the Islanders and Rangers played a good, solid defensive period. Islanders were trying to do that after their 7-1 loss to Toronto. The m- momentum shifted in the second period. Rangers iced the puck. Fourth line and the third defensive pair was out on the ice. And Doug Waite re- responded by putting his top line out there, and it worked. A beautiful pe- puck movement from Josh Bailey and John Tavares led to a wide-open net for Anders Lee, who nodded the game at, at one. And then at four minutes and 19 seconds later, Mark Stahl turned the puck over behind the net to Steven Gianta, who had a centering pass for Nick um, Letty to put the Islanders up 2-1. I think I have, I have that written down wrong, because I think that was Andrew Ladd's goal. I will look that up uh, for you to make sure that is the case. But um, I believe it, Ladd got the goal. Yes, it was Ladd. I have Luddy written down my mistake there. I apologize for that. I will get that fixed online after this episode. Uh, Andrew Ladd, the first, it's his first goal. Islanders up 2-1. to one. So things were not looking good. Rangers made some mistakes, and the Islanders capitalized on it. Uh, the Rangers found themselves on a power on a double minor power play, and the power play really had been struggling in this game. And lately, the power play was 0 for 3 in the second period, and they had a golden opportunity to tie this game on it. But what happened was Nikolai Kulaman gave the Islanders a two goal lead, shorthanded goal. And what really bugs me about this is you have Lundqvist trying to cover the puck. You have four Rangers surrounding the play. Five Rangers, maybe. And two Islanders out-hustle the Rangers. And then Tavares feeds Kuhlman for the easy goal. That can't happen when you're on a power play. That can't happen when you are outnumbering the opposition. 
How do two players outwork five? Especially some of your top skill guys. Longquist is trying to cover the puck. He can't get a whistle. Then you have just five Rangers standing there doing nothing. AV mentioned it in his post game too. Can't happen. But it did happen. The Islanders were up 3-1. Uh, the Rangers answered with a Jimmy VZ goal. Two games two in a row with the goal for VZ. He is 14 now. I believe he has three goals since pl- being moved up to the line with Stepan and Nash. But nonetheless, his goal was not enough because that third goal was the killer. I always say in a 3-1 game, and you hear Alex Trotwick say it too every now and then if you watch the Rangers broadcast, that at 2-1, the next goal is the biggest goal of the game because you you can either go tie the game or go down by two and that's what happened so the rangers um six game winning streak snapped at barclays center they have still yet to win a game at barclays center they are now oh three and one and they really struggle there i don't know if it's anything to do with the ice but last night i did not think it was the ice because they just did not play well enough to win simple as that simple as that so let's digest from the week in review into the frustrating game last night and go on to some more frustrating topics how about that Pavel Buchnevich was benched yesterday and you look on Twitter you look on Facebook and the groups and on Instagram every now and then the AV bashing because Buchnevich is this extremely skilled rookie and he's been playing on the fourth line for the last few weeks and he's benched well the way I look at it is Pavel Buchnevich has been ineffective for the last two weeks, which is why he got moved from playing in the top six. Because remember, there was a time where he was playing with Zibanejad and Nash after his injury, and he was playing well. He was, he's was he been very ineffective lately. Matt Pumple's played well for this team. Believe it or not, as much as I dislike Matt Pumple, and nothing against him, he's a, I'm sure he's a great guy, I just, I, he's one of those players that I just don't like watching for some reason. I don't really have anything, anything to put on as to why. I just don't like watching him play every now and then. But nonetheless, he's a Ranger and he will play, so we'll, we will support him. He has scored some big goals for this team. The hat trick in Arizona, the big goal against the Kings in his first game back from injury. But which Nevich deserved the benching. Now, I get it. He's young. And he has a lot of upside. He, he might be better than Jimmy VZ. I think he is. But he still hasn't gotten completely back in game shape. I mean, he did have the, the uh, conditioning stint in Hartford. And he did play well down there. But since he's been back in the NHL, he hasn't been playing that well. And you can't argue it's because he hasn't been playing with skilled players. Because for a few weeks, he played with Nash and Zabinijad. But then you had the Rangers struggling to, uh, to play solid defensively. They were struggling against teams, and they and AV made a line change. And it goes back to what I talked about last week. Are you breaking up Stepan, Kreider, and Zuccarello? No. Are you breaking up, um, I'm sorry, Zabinijad, Kreider, and Zuccarello? Because they play well together. Are you breaking up Stepan, Nash, and Vizi? No, because look how, look how that line plays together. Are you breaking up the, hey, grab me a Miller line? No, because that line plays so well together. So where are you going to put Butchnevich on the fourth line? Better him on the fourth line and playing on the power play than not seeing any ice time at all. Think about it like that. But you're going to complain because it's what we do and we're fans and we expect to see better. And he's been struggling and I think he deserved the benching last night. Now, do I think he's going to be out of the lineup for a significant amount of time? No. No. I just think it's gonna be this is gonna be a wake up call for him. You can't give a a, ki- a young kid coming in the league a lot of leniency, and you're saying, oh, Av's playing favorites with VZ, and but he's not. VZ's been here longer, believe it or not. Now, VZ's played in every game this season. He's played well, and yes, when he went, um, he had a stretch where he was struggling for a long time, but he was playing on the fourth line too. Not going to get much out of him. They weren't getting much out of him. So that's just, it's it's a way to look at it that I think should be looked at instead of just saying, well, he's putting him in a, in a position to fail. The Rangers, like, wanted to have depth. They have depth now. Depth is having four lines that can score. All four lines can score. 
Muchnevich is that f- skilled forward on the fourth line. And yes, I'd love to see Kreider, Zibanejad, and Muchnevich reunited because that line was great. But you can't mess around with with your top six all the time. And I think AV's found a mix that he likes and that has performed well. Now, yes, Nash has been... Uh, He's missed. He's had a hard time putting the puck in the back of the net, but he's been playing well enough. Now the next issue is Dan Girardi and Kevin Klein, and then you could throw Adam Clendenning in there as well. Here is what how I how I see it. The way AV views Adam Clendenning is he's a seventh defenseman. Nothing's gonna change with that at all. You're paying Dan Girardi a little over five million. He's going to play. Kevin Klein's done a lot of good for this team over the last three years. So he's going to play. Clendenning is iffy in the defensive end, but he's a great puck mover. Mover. We all know that. We all watch him play. We all see it. All right, now, can you take the good with the bad? I guess that's what, what the question is. For me, I, I don't like... I don't, not that I don't like Clendenning. I just think he's... Not what everyone says he is. That's the best way to put it like that. So let's just... I, why not play Girardi and Klein? Yes, Girardi and Klein are in the downfalls of their career, but Girardi's been playing really well this year. Now, the fancy stats don't um, agree with that statement. Girardi's played very well this year in my eyes. Take it as you want. Now, going off of that defenseman thing, let's talk about Brady Shea for a minute. Brady Shea has been outstanding this season. Everything the Rangers could have hoped for and more. But the biggest question now becomes, what happens if they do make a trade at the deadline for a defenseman? Where is Brady Shea going to fit into all this? Because if you look at your defensive pairs right now, um, we're going to write these down so we can get these um, down pat. You have McDonough, Girardi, Stall and Holden, Shea, and Klein. Let's say you get a guy like Cody France, and you're going to want to play him. So you put Clendenning on waivers, most likely. And now you got to say, okay, do we sit five or do we sit eight? So do we sit Girardi or do we sit Klein? Holden's playing, Stall's playing. Girardi's playing, Klein's playing. The odd man out of here is Brady Shea, Right? The way, just the way we, way AV thinks every now and then. That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about Brady Shea being the odd man out. Brady Shea's done a lot of good for this team, and if he is the odd man out, that's going to be disappointing. I'll be very disappointed in that. I'm sure a lot, most fans will be disappointed in that as well. Now let's talk about where the hell is Mika Zibanejad? Where have he, where has he been lately? He's been very invisible the last few games. Now he's done some good. Um, he had that beautiful assist and the Rangers win over the Buffalo Sabres, but he doesn't done much. His season stats look like this. Seven goals, 14 assists, 21 points. Two of those goals came in in the, his uh, first game back from injury. He's not done much overall, but that was a broken, uh, recovering from a broken foot, fibula. His faceoff percentage is good, 52%. But his last 10, he only has four points and they're all four assists. Sean Hartnett wrote an article the other day, uh, last night, about Mika and how he needs to he needs to get his game going, and I agree with that completely because this team's only going to go as far as Mika takes him to, because I think he is a big part of this team, and if he's going, his line's going. Kreider was invisible last night. Mika Zibanejad was invisible last night. Kevin Hayes was invisible last night. That when they're invisible, the Rangers are going to lose. But Mika needs to get his game going. He's been back for about a month now. It's time for him to find his game and it, it, quicker, quicker, sooner rather than later. And now the power play has been struggling all of a sudden. You get healthy and you, you think your power play is going to get better than ninth in the league. Now it's really struggling. And I hate the fact that I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Maybe it's time to bring Brandon Peary back in the lineup. Who do you sit then? Well, let's look at our lines that I have written down. Rangers lines last game was Chris Kreider, Zibanejad, Zuccarello, VZ, Stefan Nash, Grabner, Hayes, Miller, Pumple, Lindbergh, and Faust. And Faust isn't coming out. It's either going to be Pumple or Buchnevich on, that, on the uh, wing over there. So it's going to be Lindbergh. 
Now, Lindbergh has played well and does not deserve to be taken out of the lineup. But Lindbergh is a fourth line center, doesn't do much, doesn't have the shot Peary has, doesn't have the offensive ability that he has. Now, Peary, is, Peary doesn't have the defensive ability that Lindbergh has. So there's your question mark there as to the pros and your cons. But with this power play struggling so much, maybe it's time that Brandon Peary comes back in the lineup. Just maybe. When Perry's been in the lineup, the power play's been really good. And the power play cost the Rangers that game last night as well. Now, that's just being picky after a six-game winning streak, I guess. But nonetheless, you kind of want to see them play better. And a power play that was once really good, play that back to what, it's, what level it was. So let's take a quick look at the standings real quickly. Rangers face Washington on Sunday at 12.30. And Washington is first place in the Metro and in the league with 84 points at 39, 11, and 6. Pittsburgh's right behind them with 79 points. Columbus there as well, 77 points. Rangers in the wild card with 75 points. And I want to kind of say this. The Rangers beating Columbus the other night was worst case scenario, but they made up for beating Columbus by losing to the Islanders last night. That's a loss I can deal with because I want this team to go through the Atlantic Division. I don't want them to have to, have to deal with the powerhouse in the Metro. And they're tired by the time they get to the Eastern Conference Final or the Stanley Cup Final. Just, just want to get that out there. Islanders right behind them, 62 points. And then Philadelphia, 61. New Jersey, 58. And Carolina, 55. In the Atlanta, coaching change in Montreal while on their bye week. Michelle Therrien has been fired. Claude Julien has been rehired by the Canadiens, who are in first place with 70 points. At 31, 19, and 8, if the season ended today, it'd be Rangers, Canadians, in the first round of the playoffs in Montreal, even though the Rangers have five more points than the Canadians do, because this playoff system is so smart, right, folks? Hope you can sense the sarcasm there. This playoff system is horrible. Uh, Ottawa behind them with 66 points. Boston back in the running after they fired Claude Julien with 64 points. Toronto's there as well with 63 points. Florida's there as well with 60. And Buffalo at 60. Tampa Bay's right there as well. So is Detroit. Although Detroit's kind of uh, falling off a little bit. The second wild card is wide open in the Eastern Conference. Rangers are, have a, are pretty safe. They have a double-digit uh, double lead on the wild card. Uh, they have a 13-point lead over the Islanders for the first wild card, 12 point lead over Toronto for the first wild card. Next week is going to be a very busy week for the Rangers. Five games and eight nights starting on Sunday at 12:30 in the afternoon against the Washington Capitals. Uh, Tuesday, uh, the 21st against Montreal at the Garden. I will not be covering that game. Then you have a game Thursday in Toronto, uh, the 23rd. Then Saturday, the 25th against New Jersey. At five, and then the Sunday, the twenty-sixth against Columbus. Uh, once again, no coverage that night at five p.m. And then Tuesday, seven o'clock against Wash the Washington Capitals. There'll be no coverage for that game as well. A lot of games without coverage for me um, this week. I apologize for that. I'm going to a concert on Tuesday night, and therefore I can't cover that one against Montreal. I'm in a concert the twenty-sixth against Columbus, so I can't cover that one. And I have a class on the 28th during that time. So no coverage for that one as well. So three out of the next five games will be without coverage from me. I'm sure they'll do well. They play well in the games that I don't cover. Uh, I think they've lost two games that I have not covered this this year. So that will do it for this week's edition of the NYR Zone podcast. Once again, thanks as always for listening. I promise to fix that typo in the um, game recap from last night. Enjoy the week. A lot of Rangers hockey. Enjoy your long weekend as well. Celebrate President's Day. Uh, we're getting closer to the playoffs, folks. Think about that. Enjoy your week. Have fun. Let's go, Rangers. We'll see you all next Friday here on the NYR Zone podcast. <laughs>